this is my implementation of laserhacker.com's easy spin motor it's a free open source motor design where you can download the STL files in order to 3D print the case and following his video tutorials I was able to actually get it working mine differs slightly in the fact that it's battery powered the motor itself is sitting on a slight plinth containing four AA batteries at 2.8 uh, amp. The design is quite simple. It's an actually uh, an electromagnetic pulse motor whereby the rotor has six north facing magnets super glued onto it around its circumference and there are 12 copper coil windings that are polarized north south north south the white ones being the north and the green ones being the south electricity flows from the battery pack which is in the plinth up through a reed switch and then through each of the coils which are all connected in series and all test about a thousand ohms each now having a high resistance is important because a lower resistance would obviously make the rotors move faster but also discharge the battery quicker and that's not what I want I'm actually trying to create a motor that will run for, for weeks, months maybe even years. Having a low current draw motor is obviously essential for this project. The coils are wound all in one direction but they're actually crossed every other one. So what you have in essence is a south electromagnet and then a north electromagnet and then a south electromagnet and then a north electromagnet and I've tried where possible to have the green displaying the south and the white being the north things didn't quite go to plan when I was printing and I actually ran out of green filament so you'll notice there's actually three white but the centre one should actually be a green and therefore be, be south and to achieve this you simply reverse the polarity by crossing the wires at the front where you can see the wires where the power comes up from the base the positive goes through a reed switch and what a reed switch does is it senses a, 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 mag a magnetic attraction and then closes and then subsequently as the rotor turns because there's only six magnets and there's obviously 12 spaces where there's a gap then the reed switch opens again and that's what causes the, the pulse and the way the coils are around in alternate north and south the north magnets obviously repel the north magnets on the rotor whilst the green south electromagnets pull the north towards it so you're basically basically getting a, a push pull situation and that's what powers the, the rotor going round In this close-up, you can see the reed switch between the two white coils on the left-hand side. That's the positive that comes from the batteries. This power flows through the reed switch and then through the interconnecting pieces of wire going all the way around the motor to return to the battery on the other side. Even though it may appear that the wire goes all the way around the motor and appears to be a direct short. This is in fact not the case. Each piece of wire in between each copper coil is in fact a separate piece of metal heated up and pushed into the plastic. Here you can see a close up of the reed switch. Although you can't see it, inside the reed switch is a small metal filament which is flicking up and down continuously 
giving a tick, 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 tick noise. And that obviously powers the electromagnets on at just the right point where one can pull and one can push. Sadly, what you can't see is the sapphire bearings that the rotor sits on. There's one in the top and one in the bottom. The rotor has a darning needle pushed all the way through it. Sapphire is the very next hardest thing beaten only by diamond and they're very very expensive. But the cool thing about them is that they offer very little resistance. So really, other than the fact that it's slightly off balance, as you can see, there's a bit of a, a flow to the rotor. There's very little resistance between where the darning needle sits in the sapphire bearings. And that is pretty much key to how this works. Resistance simply means wasted power. And for a motor, whereby I'm trying to make it run for weeks, months, years, on what's relatively a, a small amount of power, resistance is the enemy. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video about my easy spin motor creation. Feel free to come and join us on the forums at laserhacker.com and if you've got a 3D printer or even if you haven't you can still make one. I do believe all the files have been uploaded to Shapeways and one or two other 3D printing bureaus. It's a fun project, not too difficult. If I can do it, trust me, you can do it. Thanks for watching.